Good morning, everybody. I hope everyone is staying safe. I know it, here it's pouring outside. So I'm gonna pretend that I'm making a nice summer salad that you can take with you to the winery. You can take it to a picnic. Um, it's a very summery and light salad. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my water on the boil. I'm making, I'm going to use um, a Rosso um, pasta. I get this at Trader Joe's. So what is it? It looks like rice. It's like rice shaped. I don't know if you guys can see that. Um, threw some there on the computer. Um, but basically, um, it looks like a rice, but it's actually pasta. So what I'm going to do is, is, I've, is I've salted the pan here. Um, you want to make sure when you are pasta. making pasta that you're cooking it essentially in salt water because that prevents it from sticking. You guys don't put oil in your water. It doesn't work. What you need to do, and it has to do with osmosis oh. and science actually, you want to make sure that water is salted because then it's not going to draw out the moisture and make it sticky um, with the flour that's in the pasta. So I'm going to grab my water. And just to speed up this process, I've actually boiled the water already. I'm just going to put it, turn it on the stove. It shouldn't take as long to boil. I'm making one cup of orzo pasta. Orzo pasta. I'm going to stick this on here. I'm going to turn it on high. And we have this special um, pan that actually whistles when it is boiling. So I'll know when that's good and done. So the other things that I'm putting in here are um, some Persian cucumbers, which, which we have chopped in slices and then in half. So they're in like little moons, half moons. Um, I have in the recipe about a cup. The important thing is when you're using your tomatoes and your cucumbers that you have them in the same proportions. So you want to about have the same amount of cucumbers and tomatoes. So there's probably a little over a cup in there. Um, I have um, in the recipe about 15 cherry tomatoes. Um, I'm using grape tomatoes, so they're a little bit smaller. So we have about the same amount of tomatoes going in the bowl as the cucumbers. All that in all there. The next thing that I'm going to put in is a um, chopped up bell pepper. We have a red one and an orange one. They're um, cut up into bite-sized pieces, if you can see. So um, they're easy to chew on. And um, we have about a quarter of a cup of each color. If you like bell peppers, put more in. You can use yellow ones, too. This is just happens to be what we had at the house. So all that's going in. Okay. I'm going to make um, a nice little, just mix it up a little bit. The other things we're going to be putting in later is um, some peas, which I want to cook. I like to use fresh peas. Um, these are English peas that you can get, sorry guys, at Trader Joe's. Um, it is a 10 ounce bag. I really like the fresh ones. You could use frozen ones, um, but with the fresh ones, just make sure that you throw them in with the pasta for the last two minutes, because if you try to put it in and don't cook them, they kind of taste like dirt. So they taste a lot better, um, but the fresh ones give a little bit more of a pop um, than the frozen ones do, and I've done it both ways. The other things that we're gonna put in are some um, Kalamata olives that we've um, cut in half. These are already pitted. These two you can get over at Trader Joe's. You can tell I like to I like to shop there. Um, then we're also going to do some fresh dill that we've chopped up. There's about um, a half a cup here. And then the last part is crumbled goat cheese. I know some people say they don't like goat cheese, but unless you've tried it, you might actually like it. This stuff is very smooth and creamy. It almost is like a really soft cheese or a cream cheese. And I like it because once the pasta gets in there, it gets it warm and it melts it a little bit, so it's really good. But you can substitute with any other type of soft cheese, maybe a fresh mozzarella. You could use that too. So what I'm going to do is, and the last thing, I'm sorry, I have some green onions. So I've chopped those up. There's about six stalks in there. 
and this is getting ready to boil. I can hear it. It's almost starting to whistle. So since it's boiling now, I have my orzo already measured out. I'm going to go ahead and toss that into my boiling water. And I'm going to set my timer for six minutes. All right. And give that a little bit of a stir. All right. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add my oil in. I'm not using a bottle dressing or anything in this. It's basically olive oil, lemon juice, salt, and pepper. So I get this special lemon olive oil from um, the Jacuzzi uh, oil press. Um, I've seen all lemon olive oil in the store too, so any lemon olive oil you can use. You want to use about two tablespoons of it. So I'm just going to put about two tablespoons in. And the reason why I like using the lemon olive oil is it still gives it more of a lemony flavor. And that's what this dish is, is there's lots of color and there's lots of flavor. So I'm just tossing that in there. I'm, I'm going to be tasting it later, and I don't want the, um, the olives to get in the way of me tasting, um, or the onions get in the way of me tasting the lemon flavor. Because it's very important that the first thing that you actually taste when you're tasting this is lemon. So after this um, gets chilled out a little bit, and I forgot to take out my salt and pepper, so let me do that. We're going to put in some fresh lemon juice. So anyone, if you've never juiced a lemon, that's okay. It's pretty easy. You take your lemon and you're going to put it down on the counter and you're going to roll it out. And what you're doing when you roll it out like that, you're loosening up all of the seeds and all the little membranes inside. So when you squeeze it, it's a little easier to squeeze. So rolling it out beforehand is great. The other great thing is one of these lemon squeezers, and it's like a little juicer. What you do is, is you open it up and you put the lemon in so the cut side is down. I know it seems kind of counterintuitive, but that's the way you're supposed to use it. And then all you have to do is press and use those muscles and squeeze that in there. Now I put in the recipe that you'd use two. I'm using pretty good sized lemons. I may only use one, but um, like I said before, the really important thing is that you taste it. Um, the nice thing about the lemon squeezer too is that um, it will trap all the seeds in there so they won't end up in your salad. Uh, if you don't have one, you can squeeze your lemon um, by hand, put it in your hand and squeeze it up so the cut side is up. That way you see any seeds that may be coming and sometimes they'll come down into your hand. So those are the two ways you can do that. I'm just going to toss this in a little bit and then I'm going to put the second half in. And this is where you kind of adjust um, the amount of lemon flavor that's in there. I'm going to do one more half. Put that in. See I have a seed here. Don't want to get in my salad. Okay. And we're squeezing. You really get a sense of how much hand strength you have when you're using this thing. And you can use this for limes too if you have any recipes that you're using for limes. It works fabulously. I have lots of juice in here. I'm just tossing it up and around and see. Um, all these vegetables that have a lot of water content, so um, the tomatoes and the cucumbers are going to suck up that acid. And that's part of the reason why I'm just having those in there when I'm tasting. I want to see if the first thing I taste is lemon. Definitely. Tastes pretty good. So I'm going to put some salt and pepper in here. And this is going to probably change a little bit. I'm probably going to taste it again after I get the pasta in. About a minute and 30 seconds with the um, pasta. And then I need to put the peas in. So I'm just going to do one pass 
with some salt, probably like a quarter of a teaspoon to half a teaspoon. And if you have fresh ground pepper, um, you can do a little bit. And this is really to your own taste. I don't like super spicy stuff, so I probably won't put as much pepper in as some of the rest of you like to. Um, if you're using pepper not in the grinder, be very careful because the amount of pepper that you go in, you put in, it may not seem like a lot, but it'll taste um, really spicy. Okay. So now I'm getting ready to add my peas. Um, my borzo is actually boiling here very nicely. So I'm going to put these peas in. It really doesn't take very long for the peas to cook. About two minutes, and then we're going to strain it. So I'm just going to let these guys, and honestly, peas are almost like um, tortellini. If you guys cook tortellini, um, once they're done, they start floating up to the top. Peas are the same way. So once they're done, they start floating up to the top. So I'm getting a lot of little guys floating up to the top. But you want to make sure that your pasta is just about cooked. I'm going to set this for another minute. Sorry about that. I didn't press the timer. I didn't want to turn the microwave on. So um, they're starting to float up to the top. They're looking pretty good. But what I was saying is you want to make sure your pasta is almost cooked because once you put this in here, it's going to stop the boiling a little bit and it's going to slow down the cooking. So you want to make sure your pasta is almost done by the time you get to this point. And let's talk a little bit about wine. So what kind of wine can you pair with this type of salad? Well, this is a light and um, vegetable and acidic forward. So you want to do something light. You could do a uh, risotto. This is a jacuzzi vineyard um, risotto, which is like a rosé. Um, by the way, all the grapes from this wine are in Contra Costa County, if you live here. And then um, this is a cashmere white. This is a white blend. Um, from uh, Klein Family Vineyards. It's a very nice white blend. So those are, you want to do something light. Um, you could do a bubbly if you wanted to, too. That would um, pair well with um, this stuff. What can you serve it with? Um, like I said, I do it at barbecues, so barbecue food. You could do it with hamburgers and hot dogs. You could do it with steak. You could do it with fish. Um, this pairs really nicely um, since it's very lemony with a white fish. So... All those things are definitely possibilities. And we are done with this. I'm gonna turn this off and I will be right back. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and dump all of that into my bowl. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to coat all of this nice warm pasta in with all these veggies and all of that great lemon juice and lemon olive oil. Get that all up in there. So now, because, you know, remember I cooked the pasta in salt water. I don't want to add more salt yet until I've actually tasted it. So, got myself another one here. I'm going to go ahead and taste it. I'm still just tasting lemon, so that's good. The next thing I'm going to go ahead and put in, I'm going to put in my olive, calm olives. Now remember, these two are salty, so um, that's why I'm going to wait for my final salt and pepper at the end. And then I'm also going to put in my green onions. I'm going to save a few for the top. I'm going to make sure that all this gets incorporated in here. Okay. So I don't know if you guys can see, but there's lots of color in there. It's great. So 
The next thing, if you're going to put the cheese in, this is the best place to put the cheese in. I'm going to put about three quarters of this four ounce container in. I like to have a little bit to, to kind of put on the top. So I'm just going to mix this up in here and it's going to kind of meld in with the warm pasta. It makes it nice and um, soft. It's really good. And then I'm going to put my dill in. Make sure you um, chop that dill off. I like to take the dill off the, um, the larger stalks. I don't really like to get a piece of um, long stalk when I'm trying to eat dill because you think of dill as being nice and fluffy, not the stalk. So I'll just um, kind of chop up the fluffy ends. And I um, put in about half a cup of that. All right, so let me do another taste. I think even with all that, I may need a little bit more lemon. Because now that I put the cheese in and I put the dill in, it's kind of mellowed out my lemon. So I'm going to add, now remember I've only added one. I'm going to add one half more. Okay. And I think it needs a little bit of salt and pepper too. Add some more pepper. And a little bit more salt. Getting that balance, sometimes you have to taste it three or four times before it really melds for you. I'm going to mix this up. I'm going to take another taste. That's pretty good. I'm perfect on salt. The first thing I taste when I open, when I put it in my mouth is the lemon, and then I taste the other vegetables. So that's the best. I'm going to take the rest of my goat cheese. I'm going to sprinkle it on top. And then I'm going to top off with a few more green onions, just so they're you got more of that color on there. Voila. Here you go, you guys. Orzo salad. Nice and fresh. We can pretend that we're having a picnic, even though it's pouring down rain outside. I hope you guys have a nice Sunday. And hopefully I'll see you again next week.